This is a review of the KJV Sword Study Bible, large print. Very excited to get our hands on a copy of this to do this review and demonstration today. Uh, this specifically is the Bonded Leather Burgundy uh, large print edition. And as you see here, one unique feature is that this Bible actually says Word of God on the cover instead of Holy Bible. And of course we have our actual sword. And uh, the script and text sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. That's really neat and kind of unique that it actually says Word of God instead of the Holy Bible. And I certainly agree that this is uh, God's Holy Word. Uh, Word of God, Sword Study Bible, and KJV Large Print Edition. Uh, many of you watching this video are probably familiar with the term red letter text or the words of Christ in red. Uh, but we're going to see here one of the main features of the Sword Bible is it is it is what's called the complete red letter edition, uh, the only one of its kind, the only KJV Bible of its kind that we know of that features the words of God in the Old Testament as well as the words of Christ in the New Testament in red. Uh, that very unique uh, feature and simple feature combined with this large readable print uh, along with several other popular study features uh, make this one of the most popular large print KJV Bibles available. Uh, so getting right into the Sword Bible itself, um, there's a lot of information to cover and a lot of unique features, a lot of introductory material that we can see here, but specifically I'm going to get to the section on the Scripture Theme Study Guide um, that talks about uh, God, the plan, and man. And several different things here. Specifically I wanted to read this portion which will explain some of the marginal sections in, in the study guide. It has been asked as to how to use the margin markings. First, determine the subject that you want to study. See Roman numeral page 25. Well, very conveniently, here we go, the very next page is Roman numeral 25 that we'll be reviewing in just a moment here. Uh, so, see Roman numeral page 25 and when you have determined the subject you wish to study, refer to the first number under that particular subject and turn to that page. After you have read the verse involved, the line, whether it be a red line, a solid black line, or a black dotted line, will have a number at the end of it. This number refers you to the next page on which the verse uh, or verses covers that same subject. Turning to that page and finding the subject symbol, uh, read the verse, and again you will note at the end of the margin marking there will be another number and that is the next page in the sequence of your study to cover your subject matter. Uh, so basically, as it's shown here, again, just remember those, those themes. Uh, G for, for God, P for plan, M for man. And here is Roman numeral 25. God, God's plan, and man. And if we were to turn the page and continue going here, uh, you'll see that there's actually quite a few different headings and that's telling you it's, it's listing out what all these different uh, sections are. So G1, G1A, uh, G1E, God's omnipotence, etc. Uh, we're going to see as we get into Genesis 4, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to try to follow this G4, God, Son, and Jesus chain, which if we were to flip over here, God, the Son, and Jesus. A lot of scripture, a whole lot of scripture going all the way through Nehemiah, Job, Psalms, Isaiah, uh, even all the way through the New Testament. It's telling you all the different places and specifically the page number to turn to to follow that marginal study heading. Uh, so flipping over to, uh, before I get to Genesis 1 actually, I uh, just wanted to also hit uh, this feature which kind of sums up uh, the KJV Sword Study Bible Large Print, which was previously known as the King James Red Lettered Bible uh, Large Print. And uh, specifically wanted to read here that it was published in order to more widely distribute God's Holy Word for evangelization and edification, to provide the public with a large, easy to, with a large print, easy to read Bible, to provide a Bible at a reasonable cost, to highlight in red the words spoken by God in the Old Testament and by the Lord Jesus in the New Testament, Number five, to identify at the end of a verse the Hebrew names for God uh, used in that verse. Number six, to provide a simple end of verse synonym of difficult, obsolete, archaic, or hard to understand words. And seven, to enhance the study of the sacred page 
by various study helps in the back of the Bible. Uh, pretty good summary of the Sword Bible features, and to get a closer look at those features, we're going to get right into Genesis chapter 1. Uh, so, of course, the first book of Moses, commonly called Genesis, uh, tells you that it's a book of beginnings, uh, beginnings of the universe and of God's people, and, of course, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, famous verse there, and uh, lots going on in this Bible. Uh, of course, uh, first of all, if I scan out on the page, you'll see, once again, we talked about that complete red letter edition. Uh, there's that red letter text in the Old Testament. Really neat, really neat feature. Uh, so we're in verse 3, God said, let there be light. Well, let there be light is red. That's God speaking. Uh, those various different uh, uh, <clears throat> quotations there uh, showing that the words of God are read in the Old Testament. So back to Genesis 1, uh, we're going to notice the first thing is an underlining of the word God. Uh, well, specifically, as I talked about in the summary of features, that's telling us that they want to identify well, God's, that's God, but God specifically, who is that talking about? Well, in the Hebrew, that's specifically talking about Elohim. Um, we also see here Acts 17, 24 and John 1. What are those? Well, those are cross-references. That's telling you that uh, essentially if you were to turn to Acts 17, 24, John 1, 1, that that's going to be a part of this chain. It's going to be a similar verse that's dealing with uh, Genesis 1, 1. Uh, but here out, we're talking about that marginal study guide. This is where it gets kind of interesting, it gets kind of crazy, where you see, here's these lines, there's a P, there's a G4-4, uh, then there's a G-4. Um, and specifically, we're going to look at that G4, remember that's the God, Jesus, or God, Son, and Jesus reference. And that tells me uh, that 4, uh, I'm on page 3, by the way, for Genesis, tells me to turn to page 4 and look for another, another instance of G4 out in the margin. Well, okay, I'm going to do that. There's page number four in Genesis 2. And specifically, I find the G4 reference right down here on verse number 26, Genesis 1, 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, once again, we have, uh, we have essentially our underlining of the word dominion, uh, also underlining the word God. We know that's still referring to Elohim. Sometimes whenever it's two in a row, verse 25, there's God, Elohim, 26, and then it doesn't list a different name. We know that that's the closest reference as Elohim, that it's also saying that that instance is Elohim. Uh, but here's once again where we talk about the archaic word or difficult to understand word dominion. Everyone may not understand what the word dominion means. Well, here down in the blank uh, blank space at the end of the verse, we see the words rule, comma, authority. So when it's talking about let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, that could mean to have rule or authority over them. So there's that very handy synonym that gives you for that archaic word. Uh, additional cross-references there, Matthew 19.4, Colossians 13.10, that you could certainly flip to. But once again, we're going to stick with the same theme. Lots of themes, and this is the beginning or continuation of a lot of different themes of G for God, P for plan, M for man, but we are specifically focusing in on G4. So G4 once again. Now at the bottom there, what do I have? I have a number six. Number six is once again referring to the page number. So I'm on page four. That tells me get over here to page number six and look for the reference G4. Well, I happen to know that G4 is down here, right there. And this is Genesis chapter 3, and this is specific, specifically referring to verse number 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and, it shall, uh, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So lots more underlined words. Uh, enmity is hostility. Um, and we know that uh, thee is specifically, it's referring to Satan. Um, seed is like offspring um, and a, a deadly wound. So bruise thy head would be a deadly wound and bruise his heel would be a minor wound. So a uh, really good uh, explanation of the features there. And let's keep going with this G4, uh, God, Son, Jesus, marginal study reference. It tells me to turn to, to uh, excuse me, to page number 80. So I'm only on seven. Let's get over to number 80. I believe I have that marked here. That flips me over to Genesis chapter 49. And if I look out in the margin, there's that G4 reference again. And that's referring to Genesis 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, 
nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Well, that's telling me there that that gathering is actually referring to obedience, talking about the obedience of the people. It gives me a Luke one thirty three reference, which I'm not going to flip to currently, but you certainly would know that you could do that if you were wanting to follow along that cross-reference. So sticking with that same G4 marginal study guide, uh, tells me to turn to page number 93. I'm on 81, so I can get over here to 93 and continue going and looking for that same G4 theme. And uh, let's see here, G4, this is specifically, this is Exodus 6, page 93. There's that G4 on verse number 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And so this is telling us, I guess, here that the uh, God Almighty reference is actually El Shaddai, would be the, the Hebrew uh, underlying meaning of, of that specific name of God, El Shaddai. And then Jehovah, uh, it's talking there about the Lord or Yahweh. Um, so, once again, the, uh, the neat part is that it gives you the page number. It doesn't necessarily tell you, go to Exodus 6, keep going to Nehemiah, etc., etc. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to find different books of the Bible, especially if you're first becoming familiar with the Bible. Um, but page numbers make it simple. You can continue following the, along on those. Uh, you can see that the text itself, the print is very large, very easy to read. Uh, and then, once again, have that, that really neat, uh, complete red letter feature. Uh, showing the words of God in the Old Testament in red, not just the words of Christ in the New Testament in red. Um, so moving on here, we, what's awesome is that you can continue following that reference uh, for G4. Uh, really shows, I mean, it goes a long way. It goes a long way, and we don't have to co co time to cover every single one of those verses. Uh, but I do, as I make my way to the New Testament, I want to show this other really neat feature um, that talks about, of course, here I am. Malachi, and then very appropriately between testaments, and it gives me the the date, 420 BC to AD, and I love that the, this is very interesting that uh, most King James Bibles uh, don't really say a whole lot about the Apocrypha. Well, here's a study Bible that actually has a essay, essentially by a theologian, that talks about that period of the years of silence about the Apocrypha and what was going on and, and what was being written in between the writings of the Old and New Testaments. And those of you that, that know or study it out, the word Apocrypha itself actually means intra-testamental or between the Testaments. And that the Apocrypha was originally included in the King James Version Bible, uh, but it was removed in the Cambridge Revision of 1629. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of other information about that in this Bible, in the beginning of this Bible. Really good history of the King James Bible and a really good essay about, about the Apocrypha and what was going on. Uh, so moving on here to the New Testament, which of course we believe is, is God's Word and uh, part of the King James Bible. No review at our company would be complete without getting to John 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, of course, here, once again, that uh, John represents uh, uh, John presents Jesus in his deity. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so we have, of course, there the Word being underlined. Uh, well, first of all, we see that Genesis 1.1 1, 1 is that cross-reference. If you remember when we read Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, it also referred to John 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, two verses that definitely deal with beginnings and dealing that uh, with God was in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is God. Um, gotta love the, uh, <clears throat> basically the unity there of the scripture. And so that underlying word, word is referring to logos, the Greek word logos, word, uh, i.e. the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, amen to that. And very, <laughs> of course, uh, there's our friend, that G4 marginal reference appearing once again, uh, because that's still continuing. Basically saying that if you would have kept going all the way from Genesis 1 all the way through all of those different page turns and on the subject of G4, which was God, Son, and Jesus, then you, sent, you eventually would have made your way to John 1.1 1, 1 and found this verse anyway. Um, so just continuing to go there to flip through. Of course, you see the words of Christ in red. Uh, more excellent verses, really easy to read text, and um, just wanted to continue going there to the end of the Bible here where we get the treasury of biblical information. The Sword Bible, as you see, is 
It's, it's not your regular or typical study Bible in the sense that it doesn't have a bunch of commentary at the end of the Bible like a Schofield or a Ryrie or some of those other study Bibles. Uh, but it, instead, it's a little bit more like a Thompson that it tries to propel you ahead into Scripture and help you find uh, verses that deal with that same topic that you're reading about and kind of let Scripture be its own best commentary. But at the back of the Bible, it's very substantial. I mean, here's this treasury of biblical information, and there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, specifically, we'll get to some of the features here, how to interpret the Bible. Um, one thing I really liked was this uh, a creationist defense of the King James Bible. And here it is by Dr. Henry M. Morris of the Institute of Creation Research. You'll notice that we, we sell several of Dr. Morris's books. We sell his own study Bible that specifically themes on creation. Uh, so to, have, to see an article about him and a man of his caliber in the back of this study Bible that talks about the defense of the King James Bible, uh, it's a good thing. It makes us proud to sell that here at the KJV store, but we only sell King James Version Bibles. It's nice to see a Bible that uh, understands that and it is, is exclusively made in the King James. Um, so, excellent uh, essays and things here on creation uh, from Dr. Morris, tons of uh, additional features, and then eventually you make your way all the way to this really large topical concordance to round it out. Uh, so, topical concordance, once again, kind of similar. Closest thing I would say is probably the, the Thompson Chain Subject Index, the back of their Bible. Um, but, you know, you can look up uh, by a proper name, so you can do studies on Aaron, or you can do specific topics. There's the word abated, tells you that abated is to become less. Uh, it gives me, uh, essentially, examples where the waters were abated, and I could turn to Genesis 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 3 and 11, uh, that to be abated uh, from that estimation in Leviticus 27, 18, and on and on. And it's a really, really large topical concordance where you can learn a lot of interesting things or look up specific things in the Bible and know where to go to read more about it and study more about it. Um, that's, the, that's the Sword Study Bible. Uh, there's a few maps in the back that are also very good, um, but basically large print, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, really nice bonded leather, flexible cover. It's also available in black. has uh, the gold page edges here. Uh, nice binding and uh, the pages in the binding there. And of course at the KJV store we can imprint your name on the cover right there to make it, make it personalized. And uh, that's the KJV Sword Study Bible in large print. Hope you enjoyed this review and we certainly look forward to sending you one very soon.